My parents were so rich and loved themselves so much that they even built a statue of themselves. We had everything money could buy and more. I had like a zillion toys, and I even had my own theme park. But I was never interested in their splashy lifestyle. I've always had a curious mind. Like, for example, I couldn't get my mind off what was behind that red door that mom and dad forbid me from opening. So sometimes I would just sit and look at it. Samantha, you must be the only child on this planet who sits and gazes at a door when you have a room filled with toys. Well, I was wondering if maybe I could look through the peeping hole just once. But you know the rules, Samantha. Please? Fine, just one peek. I'm counting till five. Okay, time's up. No matter how much my parents wanted me to be like the other kids, fun and playful, I couldn't help but question everything around me. Like, why are ants so tiny? Or why do we all have two legs and not five? Even my teachers didn't get me. Okay, class, let's spell because. Daddy eats cold apples under suey elephant. Uh, yes, Samantha. Why does Betty eat cold apples under an elephant? Oh, Samantha, you're the special one, aren't you? I didn't care how people looked at me because I knew I was meant for something great. And then one day when I was around 10, I discovered my passion after watching Mira, the <laughs> royal detective. I wanted to be just like her. My parents even got me my very own detective magnifying glass, but they instantly regretted it during one of their lavish parties. Instead of dressing up in a frilly dress, taking selfies like the other girls, I walked around with my detective costume and magnifying glass. And as I was searching for clues to unravel anything mysterious, my detective skills took me into Mr. Shaquille's bag. He worked with my parents. And oh boy, was I surprised to find out what he had inside. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing with this? You inquisitive little girl. What are you doing in my bag? And bring back my teddy. He acted like a little baby the way he hugged the teddy. It was hilarious. <laughs> and then mom and dad took my hand. That is enough, young lady. Are you trying to ruin our party? I was just playing my favorite game, dad. Give me that. <gasps> no more detective games for you, young lady. But mom, that's what I love doing. Enough. My parents locked me in my room for the rest of the party. I felt such a burning rage towards them. And what they didn't know is that I knew how to unlock my room door with my hairpin, something I've been practicing for when I become a real detective. I checked if the coast was clear and slid my way downstairs. And no, I was not going back to the party. Since my parents took away my magnifying glass, I was gonna go into the forbidden door. And once I unlocked the red door with my hairpin, I was shocked to find a tall shelf with lots of files. I was so disappointed. I was hoping to find a room full of candy or diamonds or something interesting since I was never allowed in here. And then suddenly, a photograph fell off from one of the files. And when I picked it up, it was a picture of a young girl who looked like she was my age. Why do my parents have a picture of a strange girl? While I was studying the picture, I heard footsteps. So I quickly closed the door and switched off the light, waiting for the person to go away. Ah, <sighs> that was close. I sat looking at the photo every day, almost wishing it could talk back to me and tell me who she was. All sorts of things went through my mind. Like, was she my sister? But then why would they hide her away? Was she a long lost cousin? It definitely couldn't be an old photo of mom since the girl had rare blue eyes. It was all useless, unless I was brave enough to ask my parents, which I wasn't. I eventually forgot about the picture, and I stopped playing detective. It was all just a big fantasy. Years passed, and then I was in high school. And my friend Tanya and I were the only two without boyfriends. Because no hot guy wanted intelligent girls with bags heavy with books. Oh, if only. I know, but they will never go for us because we're too smart for them. I usually snapped out of drooling over hot guys, but my friend Tanya, well, she was so desperate for love that she even stalked the football captain on Facebook, pretending to be some hot supermodel. So, does the captain want to meet you in real life yet? No, oh, you know that can't happen. With my big teeth, small eyes, and pimply face, who would ever like me? Hey, remember what I always tell you. Love yourself first before anyone else can. You're such a wise person. Thank you. I had deep love for Tanya. We only met in high school, but it felt like we'd known each other for a lifetime. I usually took a bus home with Tanya after school, but this time around my parents were waiting for me, because apparently they wanted to celebrate some business deal Dad made. Our lives are going to be even more perfect now, but we already have so much. Money can never be enough, my dear Sammy. Once you get the taste of making your own money one day, you will want more and more. Dad sounded so absurd, and then when the waitress came to take our order, my parents froze. And so did I, because her eyes looked exactly like the girl from the picture I found years ago. You. Sorry? We, we actually should get going. But I didn't take- Samantha, come on, let's go. My parents pulled me with them, and the girl looked so confused, and so was I. 
What was that about? Nothing, dear. I just felt a little sick, that's all. You're lying. I'm not five years old anymore. You two freaked out when you saw that girl. Samantha, when we tell you it's nothing, it is nothing. Now please shush. I felt so upset with my parents. They were definitely hiding something, and I was ready to put on my detective cap again and get back into the secret room. The next morning, I pretended to be sick. Sammy, it's getting late. It's time for school. I don't feel so good. Can I please stay in bed today? But you don't have a temperature. Please, Mom. I think I have a stomach bug. Okay, I'll ask the maid to keep an eye on you. I waited for my parents to go to their oil company they spent most of their days at, and then I went downstairs to check if our maid was around. It was so strange, but I guess it was pure luck because I found the maid fast asleep on the sofa. Hmm. She must have had a late night. I ran downstairs to the red door, but froze when I saw the door slightly opened. And when I got closer, my heart pounded so hard when I saw the back of someone's blonde head. What the freaking chickens? Who, who are you? When he turned around, the air in my lungs choked. This guy was gorgeous, but what was he doing in our house? He could be like a model in a hot magazine or something. What are you doing here? I live here. You have five seconds to get out or else I'm calling the cops. No, wait. I was sitting here under investigation. You and your family were at a restaurant yesterday and acted strangely towards the waitress. Uh, how do you know that? That girl was robbed of all of her parents' assets after she lost them. And when she was two, she was left at an orphanage. The caregivers found out that her parents were actually millionaires and they left their only child all their fortunes. Okay, and how does that connect to us? All the girl's assets were embezzled from her family name and company. The only way she can find justice is if we help her find a memory card, which has all the encryptions to her assets. I still don't understand how all this connects to my family. Deep down, I was scared to admit that this strange guy was maybe right. My parents might be the fraudsters. Well, their reaction yesterday triggered the girl and she contacted the CIA, who have been working on this case for years. If you know anything, you have to let us know. I started sweating and I felt so anxious when he questioned me. And then he suddenly called me as I didn't realize I was about to faint. Hey, are you alright? Can we get out of here? I feel a little nauseous. When we were in my room, I had to do the right thing. I showed him the picture. I found this some years back, in the same room downstairs. It's the same girl from the restaurant. You know what this means, right? It's just a picture. Your parents might be the criminals. I broke down crying at the sound of the truth, and the handsome, strange guy in front of me comforted me. I won't let anything happen to you. My name is Jake, and this is my number. If you see a memory card that your parents are very frantic about, call me. Thank you, Jake. I'm Samantha, and I really don't want my parents to go to jail. I know. But this girl they stole from has been struggling for a very long time. You can use the front door. My maid is fast asleep. Oops, I forgot about that. I saw her in the kitchen and sprinkled some sleeping potion around her. She'll be up after an hour or so. With that, he jumped out my window and disappeared like some kind of Batman. After hearing everything that Jake said, I was never the same again. The thought of my parents being criminals scared me, but ending up in prison was even worse. What would happen to me? Samantha! Samantha! Huh? It's your turn to go up to the board. I was not myself, and there was no way I could go up and do any calculations on the board. My life was falling apart. Samantha, what's up with you? I looked at Tanya, and I wanted to tell her everything. But instead, I just started crying. <laughs> Talk to me. Everything at home is falling apart. I'm sorry. Do you want to talk about it? I was sent home early that day, and I pulled myself together and searched the entire secret room for the memory card, and found nothing but paperwork of different accounts, but none of it was in my parents' name. Our life was a lie, and the truth had to come out somehow. Later that night, my parents had Mr. Shaquille over for dinner, and he still carried his bag with his pink teddy everywhere with him. I usually like to annoy him by accidentally touching his bag every time he was around. Do you mind? <laughs> Are you still in love with your silly teddy bear? It's made out of cushion. It's not going to break. Samantha, watch your words. Mr. Shaquille is much older than you. I'm sorry, but I think it's funny that a man his age would love a pink teddy bear so much, unless he has, like, treasure hidden in there. <laughs> My parents gazed at Mr. Shaquille, gulping like they were guilty about something. I think it's almost time for you to go to bed, Samantha. I didn't hesitate to follow Mom's orders, because I had to call Jake. Hi, I think I know where that memory card is. Great, I'll meet you at midnight, by your window. I was so anxious about seeing Jake again and actually exposing my parents. When he finally appeared at my window, I felt all kinds of butterflies swimming in my stomach. I was so crushing on him. Okay, we 
have to be very careful that no one hears us. Yeah, I know that, but the memory card is not here. I think it's in Mr. Shaquille's teddy bear. I can take you to his house. No, I don't want you getting into any trouble. You are safer here. This has been my childhood dream. I'm coming with you. And besides, you need me to find the directions. Okay then, I guess you're the leader. Jake had his car parked outside, and I was so nervous about this mission, but a part of me knew this was exactly what I was meant to do. Wow, you really are like Batman. Your car even looks like the Batmobile. <laughs> You're funny, but also cute. My face turned so red when he said that. When we reached Mr. Shaquille's house, we had two problems. His bodyguards and his scary dogs who growled at the gate, so we hid in the bushes. There's no way we can get it with all that security. That's why I always carry an extra dose of my sleeping potion. <laughs> you are my age, right? Yep, I go to school too. My uncle helped me become an intern with the CIA. Cool, right? So cool. When I was a child, I used to pretend I was a detective. I was the same, so I guess I wasn't the only weird one. Dogs are barking. I think they know we're here. Don't worry, I got this. Jake went closer to the gate. He got the dogs to sniff his hand, and they immediately fell asleep. And then he climbed the tree, jumped onto the roof, and started sprinkling the potion on all the bodyguards. Wow, he is so amazing. As we entered Mr. Shaquille's room, the first thing I spotted was a freaking toilet pan next to his bedside. And when Jake saw it, we wanted to burst out laughing, but we held it in. I think I see the teddy bear. He's cuddling it. Great. It was nerve-wracking watching Jake pull the bear slowly out of Mr. Shaquille's hand, and then suddenly he sat up awake, but his eye mask was still on. Who's there? My heart pounded <gasps> so much, but then I remembered the potion dust Jake shared with me, and I sprinkled it on Mr. Shaquille, and he dozed off immediately. Well done, Detective Samantha. We left Mr. Shaquille's mansion, and later Jake parked at a quiet parking lot where we tore open the teddy and found the memory card. Bingo. What will happen now? I hand this over to my chief officer, and your parents and Mr. Sheikh Yell will unfortunately be arrested. Hey, don't worry. I told you I won't let anything happen to you. When I got back home, the police were already there. I ran inside to see my parents, and they were so mad at me. Mom? <laughs> Dad? Samantha, what did you do? We gave you everything. You ungrateful child. I'm sorry, but I didn't want to live a lie anymore. After the cops took my parents, the girl from the restaurant appeared. Hi, I'm Jessica. Jake told me that you helped him. Thank you so much. I was taken back when she hugged me, and then a part of me didn't feel so bad for exposing my parents because an innocent person finally got her justice. I'm sure you're going to move into the mansion. I'll just get my stuff. You don't have to leave. What? This is your mansion. I have experienced the pain of not having parents and a home. Life can really humble a person. I would never want to see a good person suffer. Thank you so much. Even though my parents were not present, I still had the chance to be with my friends and continue with school. You know what you should do? You should write a book. <laughs> Maybe I will, but what I'd like you to do is put on your real face on social media, because there is nothing better than the real you. Tanya eventually took my advice and even ended up having a real date with her crush. Some of my dreams also came true. Jake got me an internship spot with the CIA, and I was so good at my job. I think the diamond is in the bottle the suspect always carries around. Well, Samantha, I think you might be right. But all of my dreams came true when... Would you like to go out with me? Hmm, it depends, Detective Jake. On... It depends on what you know about me so far. Well, I know you like Mira, the royal detective. And... I know you like me, too. You know me well.